Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> we, I am calling the St. Louis County Council Committee the hold to order May 18, 2021. It is now 3 p.m. We are going to be discussing trash, waste, and dumping in St. Louis County. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Madam Chair. Council Member Days. Here. Council Member Dunaway. I'll give. Council Member Fitch. Here. Council Member Webb. Present. Council Member Clancy. Council Member Trakis. Present. Council Member Harder. Madam Chair, you do have a quorum. And hopefully, uh, Councilman Herter can um, can hear us. I do see his picture, so but we will yeah. carry on. We will. Um, the committee takes official notice of and admits into evidence all St. Louis County ordinances and resolutions. We are here to discuss, as I mentioned earlier, the trash, the dumping, and the lack of uh, enforcement that we have found ourselves in. This has been particularly challenging in the first, the fourth, and I believe the sixth district. They, uh, these are pockets of unincorporated St. Louis County and or county owned properties. Uh, somehow there seems to be at least no interest or, uh, or no effort to make sure that our properties at least are kept up to par. Um, I don't know if this is a traditional lackluster response to this, but at this particular point, it stops now. Now, the only um, this will not be the only time that we will be discussing this because I am going to have periodic meetings looking at what we have accomplished and how we move forward. Uh, the fact that we have properties and, and communities uh, that are in such disarray uh, is no excuse. And so this is the first effort to make sure that we come out of this with some kind of a plan as to how we will be going forward to address these issues. So with that, um, we have a discussion. Um, we have several panelists here. You have presented us with a PowerPoint. We will go with the, um, the questions that we have presented to you. We will go in the order of transportation, partnership, revenue, municipal league, police department, public health, and then we have, I do not see him on the phone, but we have a, a constituent, Greg Porter, who is the chair or president of the Problems uh, Solving Committee. Uh, I believe he's in the fourth district. So that will be the order that we will start this evening. And we have already, the, the staff has been working very, very hard. You all should have received a list of questions uh, that we are requesting responses to. What we will do is go and answer the questions. If there's something in the PowerPoint that you want to uh, direct us to, we will do that, but we won't just sit here and have a PowerPoint presentation. We want to get to the answers and the responses that we've already asked. So with that, let's start with transportation, please. Madam Chair, Madam yes. Chair, I wanted to let you know, Councilwoman Clancy has joined the meeting. Thank you so much. Uh, Madam right. Chair, Madam Chair, this is Chris. Do you want to discuss how we're going to move people in and out? We're going to start with the transportation department. You have a list of the people who are participating in that. Dan, Marcellus, and Charlie. You have those people there. Madam Chair, I will, um, this is Dr. Feinstein, Public Health. I have the slide deck. Let me uh, run the slide deck for them and take them to the section for um transportation and public works. Yes, as it relates to the questions that are being asked. And we you can point to us to that in the in the uh, PowerPoint presentation because we are limited on time and I want to make sure that we get the answers to the questions. That's the first and foremost uh, information or importance to me. Of course. All right. Um, Chris, um, I don't have share permission. Can you um, switch that please? Thank you. Yeah, give me just one second, sir. So uh, we're starting with transportation, and I'm understanding, Dr. Khan, you are doing the transportation? Uh, no, okay. we have colleagues from uh, Transportation and Public Works. 
Right, and that's who that's who I want to hear from. Yes, ma'am. They're the ones that are going to be walking you through the slide. All right. Is Dan on? I don't see Dan. Councilwoman Days, this is Marcella Spate. I'll be representing St. Louis County Department of Public Works and Transportation this okay. afternoon. Okay. That's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you very much, Marcella. Okay, let's let's go. I just like to first um, I like to thank uh, the council for this opportunity. The Paul's property unit owns and solves unique and difficult health and safety problems that cannot be resolved through standard operating procedures. These problems are solved to the satisfaction of the primary stakeholder. These problems require a high degree of people skills, creativity, and access to social resources. Uh, we field uh, complaints and we perform proactive inspections throughout unincorporated St. Louis County and those municipalities that contract with us. Here, I believe the slide is up depicting uh, providing some numbers of our previous year's efforts. In 2019, our property maintenance uh, complaints was around 5,129. And we did field uh, over 2,000 proactive inspections. These are inspections performed prior to someone um, uh, lodging a formal complaint. As you can see in the slide, the 2000 numbers kind of dropped a little, but that's due to a lot of the uh, problems we had in the year of, of 2020. We can all contest to that. The department covers a lot of real estate. The next slide depicts uh, our department does cover 173 square miles of real estate. The numbers I provided here today are numbers of single family and multifamily dwellings. Uh, we have approximately 141,000, a little over, and those that are owned are, is about over 30, no, 93,000. And those that are occupied is somewhere around 36,000. However, we only have the capability to monitor 2,020 of those vacant properties associated in this number. Municipality contracts, I thought it would be important to uh, mention this. Mm -hmm. um, we serve unincorporated St. Louis County and 30 of the 88 municipalities that contract with St. Louis County for property maintenance and or residential reoccupancy enforcement. However, these municipalities are required to reimburse the county for those services. What measures are taken to abate a problem property? Well, first we receive a complaint, then we issue a violation and give the property owner a compliance date. If the property owner fails to abate the violation in the specified time, we then escalate it to our legal department. If no resolution is accomplished through the owner's action or council, we then in turn turn this property over to our problems property unit. Some of these units or properties are the worst that we have in the county. And uh, through our contractor on call and volunteer workers, we're able to tackle these properties to try and better the neighborhood. Uh, provided here are our dumping challenges. Uh, people soliciting as licensed haulers. The customer more or less secures their services. However, they do not indicate where they're going to dump the material. We have situations where landlords and management companies' employees go out and perform rehabs and clean up eviction uh, dwelling units and they commit the dumping infraction. Construction debris and uh, large amounts of tires we see throughout the neighborhoods. Um, we've seen some of these acts in action and I do have a picture here today to depict 
one of those incidents. Persons without trash uh, services tend to dump on the adjacent lot, or they may find one in the neighborhood and they will dump their uh, debris there. And you have those who buy new appliances and the old appliance goes out to the vacant lot, perhaps in their neighborhood or the front door of another vacant property in which our department will be notified and in turn we will go out and clean it. The before and afters, um, we see the tires and my crew went out and, and took care of that by abating the tires. We have a home that is in disrepair uh, in the after and before. I thought these would be interesting. The interior of a house, this is a, um, a hoarder who needs resources. However, we were able to work it out to where we're able to clean her interior and provide the resources needed. And this is all on a on a strapped budget in which we have here today. That's all I have right now. Thank you very much, Marcellus. Um, the, I had a, um, you mentioned the calls. So when they, when do you call the police officer or, or uh, do the, 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 does the public or the owner call the police officer if they see something happening there? Well, it's ideal for if, um, if an infraction is taking place in plain sight and the neighbor was to um, see it take place, we prefer them to call the police. The police will go out and investigate. We do not want anyone confronting someone who is dumping. That could be a hazard and an unsafe act. After that, the uh, police department will notify us or we will have someone uh, make a formal complaint through our complaint line, our phone numbers, or uh, through our email complaint uh, system. So the last question had to do with your department crossover. So you would consider the police as a part of your crossover there. Anyone else that would be involved in that pro in this process? What are the department? Well, I'm not sure about the crossover aspects as a bad thing. Uh, the no, 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 I'm not saying it's a bad thing. No, no, I'm okay. not saying that. I'm just saying, what other departments do you work with to get the job done? That's it. Well, right, I understand. Well, trash and things of that nature, we will um, have the health department chime in. Uh, we do uh, actually perform provisions of the health department's code. We do have the MOD with the health department in which to do so. So we work consortedly to uh, tackle these issues uh, on a back and forth nature, but uh, um, the crossover is not really a hindrance. It's just knowing that there is someone to go to. That's good. That's good. Uh, I wanted to ask about the immunities and the ones that you have contracted with 30 out of 88. Are they paying? Are they up to date? Um, I'm not involved in that aspect. Uh, so who would that be? I don't think where anyone may be in rears. However, uh, that's not a field in which I'm familiar with. Okay. Well, they, they, Terry, they, they do have to pay. They do pay before we would do any further services, so they're up to date. And and who was is that Pat? That's Dan Drysburg. Okay, Dan. All right. Thank you, Dan. And that that that's my question. That's my re, uh, reason for asking the questions. You know, are they getting this free service? So if you they do and and they are up to date, and so you don't have any problem with that. But I want to make sure that the that the public out there understands that basically we handle the unincorporated areas unless we are brought in by a muni. We can't go into a, a municipality with a mayor and 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 county council. And, and do that work for them. They have to contract with us. If I'm incorrect, let me know now. You, you have it correct. All right. Okay. Um, let me ask and see if any uh, council members have any questions. I cannot see all of you all, so you'll just have to kind of speak up here with the uh, with this thing on the board. So, any other uh, council people with questions? Chair. Is that Councilman Trakis? Thank you. Yes, it is. Thank you. Good afternoon, Marcel. It's good to see you. Oh, same here, sir. Before I ask any questions, I just want to go on record that uh, I've worked with you pretty closely now over more than four years. 
and you and your crew exemplify the best in county employees. The job you do, the job you guys do with the limited resources you have is impressive, to say the least. So I thank you for that very much. Thank just so my colleagues understand, just so my colleagues understand, Marcellus, basically, as I understand, a problem property unit essentially is comprised of three or four different components of county government. One would be obviously the uh, public works folks like yourself. The other would be the county counselor's office, sometimes Department of Health, and then last but certainly not least, the police department. Did I get them all? Yes. I did? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, fair to say, Marcellus, in your opinion, that every one of those components is essential for a problem properties unit to function at its highest level? That would be a true statement, sir, yes. Okay. And um, the last sort of non-connected piece would be uh, once you guys have done your job, what happens in municipal court, correct? Well, um, once we perform our job and we pass it on to our legal department um, due to the large docket and due to the, the uh, I should say, the world in which we deal in, um, no one property is the same. Um, we do have some issues on obtaining compliance through the legal system. Um, when the com complainant, I mean, not complaint, but when the individual that's been um, cited is not cooperative. And the problems property unit, this is, these are one of the units that are persistent at trying to obtain compliance from these individuals. Um, we do have some fining systems in which we use in the courts. However, uh, we do have some, um, uh, some things that move quite slowly, if you will, and thereby uh, trying to catch up on some of the day-to-days uh, tend to be quite uh, difficult at times. Right now, we are, it's out of control with okay. violators. And that's a very, very diplomatic answer. But um, just so I can, I can clarify it, once your public works people and the police and the Department of Health have done their job, you then um, turn it over to the counselor's office, correct? Yes, sir. And then once they do their job, the matter is then pending before the municipal court. Would that be a fair statement? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And then if I understand your response, the backlog, just call it that for now, um, is a result of um, backup and maybe less than aggressive um, action with respect to um, offenders. Would that be a fair statement? Um, not knowing the inner workings of the legal department from the layman's standpoint, I would say that would be a fair statement. Okay. Um, that's all I have for now, Madam Chair. I, I may have another question or two for Mr. Sprite a bit later. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Anyone you. else with any other questions? Madam Mr. Chair. Marcellus? Yes, uh, Councilwoman Webb. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Marcellus, I want to thank you for uh, coming today. I know in my short time here, I've worked with you for several different issues from uh, unincorporated District 4 community members that have had issues, and your team honestly goes above and beyond to accommodate everybody. So thank you for that. Um, there is a challenge in not just dumping, but also just the accumulation of trash in not residential areas, but also outside of residential areas, like closed, uh, like the Shop and Save closed store or the old Kmart lot and things of that sort. Is there anything that we can do to prevent this or to, is there something we can do to prevent it? And if not, how can that become more of a regular pickup? Because right now I have to call or Shantae calls, someone calls, and then your team can be reactive. But is there anything we can do proactively? To address this is there something the 
the, the property owners can do that own that actual development or that property or something they can be a hold accountable for. Do you have any recommendations for that? Well, I can't go any further than what I'm permitted to do by ordinance, and that is to cite the property owner, no matter who is occupying the structure, what establishment have you. But uh, when a violation is issued, it must be addressed to the property owner. These have been challenges in the past to actually locate a property owner that is receptive and will more or less uh, have some sort of umbilical to uh, communicate with us on their uh, ability to clean the property. But right now, if I was to have certain funding, I could be a lot more proactive. As I said in my presentation, we're only able to cover uh, a fraction of what we need to cover with the manpower and the funding in which I have before me. So to kind of answer your question, we would have to be a little more proactive in what we do as far as property maintenance, that is for residential as well as commercial establishment. And we need to have committees like this to have the community to buy into beautifying the property and caring. Uh, it's nothing wrong with someone getting together and picking up trash and garbage. As you well know, Councilwoman, we've provided uh, some PPU in which, you know, so those things could take place. Um, that would just have to be, uh, we have to have a little more of that. And um, I do see a vision where, you know, with interested parties such as the, this panel here, um, we can make a change in that aspect. But um, uh, it's time. And uh, I wish I could cover more real estate and um, keep the property value of those within St. Louis County, keep their property value up. I really do. And I thank you for your uh, comment about your appreciation with my department. And um, it's been a pleasure working with you since you've become a council person, say the least. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Marcellus. I, I do have a follow-up. So we understand, and, and we demonstrated just this past weekend in District 4, where we came together to pick up trash. Uh, one of my my concerns is that the enforcement of the ordinance when someone is cited, where especially when it is a commercial property, how are to make sure that that uh, ordinance and that citing for violation is actually um, enforced. And so I'm concerned that that isn't happening just because of how frequent we have to call you. And then the other the other comment that I want to say is that in our actual county lines, because I'm learning that the difference between MoDOT and county. So inside of our county lines, if there is a, a association or some organization, do they have the authority to, I don't want to say cite, but to, I guess, just report on members in their community? Because I've learned of some conflicts when the association is being proactive and they speak up and they go forth to a, a residence and say, hey, you're not following certain ordinance and then there's a conflict. And I really want to prevent them from being a part of a conflict. So if there's some type of way that your limited resource department can help facilitate those more, I would be, we will be appreciative because we, we want to avoid confrontations and we don't want to put anybody safety in jeopardy because they are trying to be the neighbor that looks out for their community. So that was my last comment. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank any you, Madam council, Chair. You are quite welcome. Any other council members with any questions? Council Matrakis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Marcellus, I wanted to follow up because in thinking about your answer my, to my last question, I want to make sure it's clear to my colleagues and the public. Um, and I'm going to ask, ask it, but I'm going to basically try to paint a uh, scenario that it's been, in my experience, the case. So and I, I understand, I'm, I'm not going to mince words here, okay? Um, my experience is that your office and your, and your folks do an exemplary job. The police department does a great job. The counselor's office takes that information, 
brings charges against um, offenders. And in my experience over four years, where the ball gets dropped, squarely in municipal court. And I don't want any clouds or misconceptions about that. And so I want it clear from your perspective, would you agree with that summary? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, okay. That's because I think that needs to be on the record that um, where this ball is being dropped time and again, and I'm talking about, I've got offenders that are on the 10 year list. Um, the municipal court is not doing its job. And I, for one, intend to uh, see that we change that to the extent we can. But everything I've known about problem properties unit, um, whether it's the counselor's office, your office, the police department do a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you. And uh, Marcellus, I do want to uh, say again, I appreciate when you send the pictures before and after, I guess you send them to all of us, but it's a marked difference in what you're doing out there. And I appreciate that. So we need to move on right now. If there are no further questions from the council members to move on to Charlie. Charlie, are you there still? Is yes, it Madam Chair, I'm here. All right. Okay, uh, I didn't have any slides, but I am available to answer any questions. Uh, Mr. Spate, as he explained, uh, uh, enforces uh, dumping on the um, private property, and uh, we do roadside cleaning, which is more litter than dumping, I guess you'd say. But if someone dumps something on the road, then transportation would pick it up. And like I said, I don't have any slides, but I am available for any questions. Uh, Charlie, do you have, uh, uh, is there any kind of uh, anonymous reporting that you all do or can you do? Uh, because I do rep uh, uh, understand Councilwoman uh, Webb's uh, concern that we don't want to get you know, neighbors against neighbors, but is there any kind of anonymous reporting that can be done? I don't believe so, no ma'am. Uh, we have our service request line, uh, 615-8538, but uh, it's my understanding, like any communication with county government, that that would be subject to a sunshine request if someone wanted to make it. So uh, I, I can't say that anything would be completely anonymous. Okay. Thank you for that. Any questions for Charlie at this point, at this time? Any questions for Charlie? Madam Chair? You'll have to say something because, okay, uh, Councilman Harder. You'll yes. have to say something because I can't see everyone. Okay, great. Um, this could probably go for Charlie or any of them. Uh, should we had a, set up a 800 number that uh, cannot be traced or that at least could be very vague um, so that these properties could be uh, better reported to us when there's big problems like this property in Wellston? that is, you know, out of, con out of control. I went by there yesterday and looked at it, um, even though it's owned by the, um, uh, the partnership, uh, it is a dumping ground. And uh, I don't know how long that's lasted or been that way, but uh, it looks like it's been that way for a long time. So is there a way that people could report this stuff without any um, blowback on them when it comes to these issues? Either you, uh, Charlie, or uh, Dan. I think Dan was there, or Marcellus. Either one. Can you answer I'll that? I'll answer for both groups, but I don't. If anybody can call into the phone system. We really, we, they don't have to give a name. Um, and as far as I know, it would be it's nothing we trace. Um, I'm not sure what IT does or if they can can determine who's calling the the general numbers that Charlie gave or that we have in our slide index. Um, but I do want to point out that the, the issue in the city of Wellston is not handled by either parts of the Transportation and Public Works Department. That's in the city of Wellston. They do not contract with Public Works, and I don't believe there are any arterial roads uh, for Charlie to, to pick up along that those properties. Correct. But in, I think you're right about that. But in general, I guess we would look at throughout the whole county, I guess, how we attack these problems, you know, from a triage standpoint that 
a major dumping like what's happening in Wellston would be maybe at the top of the list and you'd have lesser uh, calls uh, for service on everything down to, you know, just tall grass. Um, and is there a way of triaging these? Because it seems like we're holding back the ocean when it comes to many of these problems. Is there, is there a way you, you decide what gets fixed and what doesn't in, with the budget you have? So um, we, we do triage, both, both groups would triage um, it, stuff that the two departments, the department is responsible for. The, the issue again is this is a city of Wellston and St. Louis partnership issue. Um, neither the Department of Transportation Public Works does not have any jurisdiction here. We can't do anything. We, we don't have the authority. So if the city of Wellston wants these properties cleaned up, they have to rely on the owners that work? They, they would rely on the same services we do. They, they could either clean them up themselves and put a lien against the property or cite the property owner uh, and go through the court system as we, same process we would have. To. In the issue with this property on Lulu Avenue, that's owned by the LCRA. And have they been cited or why aren't they cleaning up their property? I, I can't answer that. Maybe they can't. They are on the call, I believe. But we have not yeah, because I, we I, don't have I, authority. I'm here yeah. if everybody can hear me. Councilman Harder, uh, the partnership is scheduled uh, next, and we can get those questions to them okay. because they, they are hopefully prepared to answer those questions. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Any further comments from the council members? Thank Madam you. Chair, I have one, one question for... Um, yes, Councilwoman Webb. Is there a regular schedule where, and I'm talking about unincorporated because that's the majority of the concern I have. Is there a regular schedule for that trash cleanup just in the general county roads? Not the ones from the Department of Transportation, from Missouri Department of Transportation, but just within the county roads, Redmond, Lindbergh, I'm sorry, not Lindbergh, Redmond, Parker, those type roads. Is there a regular sweep and cleanup schedule that can be provided? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, there's not really a schedule that's provided, but we do clean up trash, you know, at least every week. And of course, before we mow, uh, we clean up trash because if you run over it with the mower, it becomes, you know, a thousand pieces of trash. And we do have a street sweeper that uh, also sweeps in, in all districts of the county. Uh, it's not necessarily a set schedule. Some of it's weather dependent, but we do regularly uh, clean along the roadsides. Thank you, Mr. Charles. And the reason that I ask or inquire is because certain areas get are much worse than others. And if there's a regular schedule that I can share with associations or it just concern members, I think that would tamper down some of the discourse. But more importantly, we can know to look forward. If we do another community cleanup, if I know you're coming through in June and you're going to cover those areas, then I should divert our attention to somewhere else. So maybe we could work on something like that. I don't know how much overhead that it costs you and your department as for taking the time and effort to do so, but I think it would be value added. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Any further Thank questions you. for anyone in the Department of Transportation? Well, thank you all so much for that information. Uh, and I do know that some of your larger municipalities, they have regular street sweeping schedules or scheduled pickups of trash and things like that. So that might be something, uh, uh, again, with uh, Councilwoman Webb that we might want to consider adding uh, in, in, that, in that space. All right, so we are moving right on to the partnership. I think um, Mr. Cram is here. Yeah, so can you, you hear me, start? Madam um, Chair? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can hear me. Thank you, yes. Okay, very good. Just want to make sure. All right, so the uh, partnership is the entity that oversees the Land Clearance for Redevelopment Authority. The Re Land Clearance for Redevelopment Authority holds about 150 parcels in the city of Wellston on behalf of Wellston to help encourage development uh, in Wellston. And this has been kind of a practice 
over many years that the LCRA would hold that property uh, in, in anticipation of development plans and developers to help assist with that development. Uh, most recently, we have uh, wanted to and asked for participation with the PGAV uh, consulting group working on a plan with Wellston. And so that has, is in process. A number of uh, county offices are also involved with that uh, PGAV plan, consulting plan for Wellston. It's important because a plan is needed to help determine the transition of the properties from our ownership to uh, particular development opportunities or working with uh, other entities to transfer uh, properties. But as you mentioned, and as the previous uh, discussion was, there's been a lot of illegal dumping uh, in Wellston. Uh, it's just gotten to be uh, at a level that's uh, pretty extreme. And so with that, uh, we are taking a active uh, role in cleaning up this dumping uh, in Wellston, specifically on Lulu Avenue in Lulu Heights, as well as the North Market uh, Street in Lulu Heights. And so next week we have this all planned, and we have, uh, and because as you, as the last discussion mentioned, there are no agreements with the county. Uh, transportation area, uh, we've had to engage outside resources uh, to do this. And so we will be uh, hiring front loaders and trucks and all of that to clean up this area May 25th through May 27th, which is next uh, Tuesday through Thursday. And our person who's leading this for us is Bill Buddy. His uh, information is there. We'll share uh, also uh, his phone number as well, because uh, we also uh, want anyone who wants to wants to help clean up. Uh, they can please join us on those days. Uh, periodically in the history of LCRA, there've been these uh, cleanups, but we've taken some actions that we hope will try to catch uh, people who are doing illegal dumping. And if you go to the next slide, we've had a camera installed, and so the St. Louis County Police uh, helped us with that, so we really appreciate that. And then also the North County Police Cooperative uh, will be patrolling the area. But our objective is to get license plate numbers and uh, move those through the system uh, to uh, increase enforcement uh, against uh, illegal dumping. We're also installing some concrete barriers, uh, one to close off some access to the area. And working with Wellston, uh, we understand that this has been agreed upon by the residents uh, to, again, be able to reduce the amount of illegal dumping uh, in the area so that when people come in, these cameras uh, should be able to uh, be able to record who's coming in. Then if you go to the next slide, then we also engage uh, grass cutting companies throughout Wellston uh, to help with uh, keeping the grass at a certain level. Uh, they are uh, indicated here uh, covering different uh, areas within Wellston. Uh, and what we're trying to do there is make this more enforceable as well, meaning they cut the grass, we take, they take pictures before they cut, they take pictures after they cut. I think you've heard that from the, one of the other presenters earlier, uh, kind of these before and after uh, photos will help us make sure that these companies are doing what we contracted with them to do, is cut grass and do some small debris uh, removal. And then if you go to the next slide, but again, uh, as you mentioned, Madam Chair, we, we all need to uh, come up with a process to make sure that we enforce uh, illegal, illegal dumping against illegal dumping. 
and make sure that uh, people don't have to uh, live within this kind of environment. And so we're going to intensify our efforts to do that. And then also uh, we're trying to make sure that we're operating within the context of a plan, and that's the PGAV plan, which we anticipate should be completed uh, in June sometime. And so that will help with uh, determining uh, property disposition. And then we're also, because we have been contacted by other communities in which we do not actually own land, but we feel that there's an opportunity to assist, and that is using a similar type of approach in developing plans, having consultants develop plans for those areas to determine land use, and then working in a task force collaborative kind of approach to try to address illegal dumping uh, in those areas as well. So those are our objectives. And I, I, we were going to put up a slide that had uh, Bill uh, Buddy's phone number on it, but if, uh, if Chris can unmute him, he can just tell you uh, what his number is. But his uh, email address is right there. Thank you very much. Do you own property in Kinloch? Does the LCRA own property in Kinloch? Uh, we own our primary property is owned in Wellston, but not. So you in have Kenlock. 150. Thank you. I'm sorry. You have 150 properties in Wellston. That's correct. Are all of them in Lulu Heights? No, no, no. They're spread throughout Wellston. Okay. There is a part of Lulu Heights that's dumping on the side, and then there are a bunch of vacant buildings on the right, on the other side of the street. Do you own those? Oh, and actually, Bill can jump in with the, the specifics on specific addresses. But what we own, uh, we own some parcels in, in Lulu Heights, but the majority, again, of parcels throughout throughout Wellston. But Bill, feel free to jump in. Um, Madam Chair. Okay, well, Chris, you, okay, there we go. Yeah, please go ahead, Chris. Uh, Bill, Bill. Yes, specifically the area you're referring to on Lulu Heights, when you first turn off Charles Rock Road, there are two vacant houses. I believe it's 1521, and I'm not sure about the other address. It's not uh, posted there. The uh, LCR does not own those. I believe they're both what we call post third sale properties. Um, so we, we're not technically responsible for their unpaid back taxes. Uh, they're kind of in a limbo state. The uh, right. lots across the street we are responsible for, and we are planning, uh, Mr. Krim said, cleaning those up next week. So, but there's about four houses or five houses on the other side. One has been burned down, and there are others that are just in deplorable positions, uh, 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 conditions. And I'm also looking at that as a as a health issue because you'll have squatters in there, and and that does not that's not healthy for people to be living in, in a place like that. So that's why I'm asking that question. Uh, let's go to the. You have a contract now for three. You have uh, uh, three people, three contracts you've let. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And they will be taking care of the 150 properties that are located in Wellston. Correct. Okay. Do you have any property in the in the um, in the sixth district that are LCRA properties? Uh, not knowing the boundaries of the sixth district specifically, I can say that ninety nine percent of our properties are located in Wells. Okay. Now, and you mentioned about the uh, uh, PGAV um, study, and that's fine. I know you're probably working with Beyond Housing on that, um, but. If you want to in, attract people to a, a community, it's not going to come to a community with, with places looking like that. So I don't know if it's the chicken and the egg or which comes first, but in my mind, you can't expect anybody to come in and do any kind of development when you got a dump there. Is that fair to say? Right. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. No, very, very, very much so, Madam Chair. And so with this plan, this provides an opportunity for us all to determine uh, what properties uh, go to which developments, uh, put out requests for proposals, et cetera, 
to get uh, good qualified developers in. We were we did not want to dispose of any property, and we've had people request properties during this period that PGAB is working on this plan. Uh, we did not want to have any property transitions until transactions until this plan was done so that everything could be done in the context of the plan. So while we're working with the plan, the plan may or may not come to fruition, but in the meantime, that those properties need to be attended to. So whether it comes to right. whatever we're going to do, you may or may, or may not be able to get any developers. But at, at the end of the day, those properties still need to be uh, need to be taken care of. The second thing I wanted to mention uh had to do with the, with the liability. And while I appreciate people coming forward and helping to clean up, uh, I, I'm, I'm questioning a liability there or for people who may get hurt or bitten by something or whatever. Have you considered that while you're asking people to help volunteer? Yes. And so uh, two things. One is that all of the major equipment will be handled by all of the uh, automated equipment. So that's the front loaders, the trucks, all of that. That'll be removed from that. Uh, the people who have, are volunteering will be, in essence, raking and some of the small debris. Uh, but then we are making sure that they are dressed appropriately, uh, just like anyone would suggest. Our legal department has looked at things just to make sure that we're covered uh, in that respect and that there are waivers and so on that we have to be concerned about. Okay, the last question I have has to do with cameras, and we, we, you, you have cameras already there that the police department, if, I'm, if, if I heard you correctly, the police department are monitoring those? Yeah, those cameras just went up uh, last week, uh, uh, the week before <laughs> oh, okay. last, right, just in the last okay. two weeks. Uh, okay. Because again, we're serious about trying to make sure we try to catch the illegal dumpers and discourage the illegal Well, dumpers. if enforcement is a problem, then we have, a, as, as Councilman Trake has mentioned earlier, if the, if the bottleneck is with uh, the municipal courts, then we have to do something to shore that up or, or whatever needs to happen to make that. But it doesn't make any sense because people will soon figure out that uh, even though I got a ticket, it's uh, nobody's going to find me or whatever. And that's not what we want. But the, at the end of the day, I'm looking for some kind of a plan that you can come, come with me, come to me or come to the council with a regular, with a regular uh, uh, program or how you're going to address this. Because it doesn't make any sense to do that. And then you go back two weeks later and it's just as bad. Let me ask any, any questions for the, um, from the council people. Councilman Harder. You're on mute, sir. Yeah, there we go. Um, I looked up in the tax record while you were talking. It looks like land clearance and re for redevelopment owns about 21 or 22 properties just on Lulu Avenue. And so you've created a place where everybody knows that nobody's going to check on that. And, uh, you know, it's become a dump. Uh, it looks like Wellston owns about three properties on that street as well. So after you clean this up is there a way that we could create maybe a central spot in wellston where people can stop dumping this on people's properties take stuff to a central location and then that can be regularly every week cleaned out you know almost like a, a transfer station like you'd have anywhere else in the county where people will stop putting this stuff on people's property and put it on a commercial piece of property that would be designated for this type of dumping and that it would be cleaned out every week, you know, to a landfill or someplace else. Have anybody thought about an idea about that? Yeah, so, uh, Councilman Harder, so thank you for that because we've been uh, trying to come up with all kinds of ideas to uh, try to stop this illegal dumping. Uh, our understanding is it's not generally individuals that are doing the dumping. It could be contracted companies uh, that are, instead of doing the proper thing and taking it to the to, to proper disposal places, uh, they actually uh, just dump it here. And so we want to really uh, go after them. 
And then in terms of uh, kind of a central uh, dumping uh, kind of uh, facility, uh, those are things we just have to talk about because there are resources that are involved uh, in terms of paying for that. And so, but we all re- realize this is, this is a critical issue, and it does create re- require some creative thinking to make sure that we address this. I mean, this this seems to be a behavioral issue. So, how do we change the behavior of people to stop the dumping? Whether it's enforcement and strong enforcement, or or we give them other opportunities to dump this legally. Um, so they don't dump it on their neighbor's yard. Uh, I don't. I don't know. We we need to explore all all avenues here. But I think the enforcement is a big piece of this. And I would assume, based on other stories that I've heard, that our municipal courts have not been enforcing uh, these ordinances all of last year from the standpoint of fines and others. Maybe somebody can communicate on that. But uh, from what I've been told is that because people don't show up to municipal court, they don't get fined and they don't get cited because of COVID. So I don't know if anybody's found that out as well. Madam Chair. I I would just... Just one second. I I would just say, okay, very good. Go ahead. No, no, uh, uh, you finish, Rodney, the uh, the, uh, comment from Councilman Harder and then uh, Councilwoman Clancy. Okay. No, I think, it, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Councilman Harder, that it just requires a collaborative approach. Uh, it's not just one aspect. It, it is uh, a multiple uh, kind of dimension team uh, to make this happen. So, Councilwoman Clancy? Yeah. Um, if, if you all covered this already, please let me know. I had to step away for a phone call after I joined, but... Um, mm-hmm. In my look into this issue, it, it, um, I learned that the Missouri Department of Natural Resources um, is part of this whole puzzle, um, and they, coord- they, they ask people to report illegal dumping to their office, and they direct um, those reports to a regional office that then also has some, I, maybe some enforcement authority or some ability to help intervene here because this also is a public health issue. Um, I know, for example, a year ago um, when I helped participate in a cleanup in Kinlock, you know, DNR was there to make sure everyone, all the volunteers were safe. But also, again, I think they helped provide some of the resources for that cleanup. Um, So I guess I'm just wondering um, what, you know, what collaboration Rodney with you and your team looks like with DNR and perhaps you know, if we have a continued conversation about this, we need to have someone from DNR here too. No, I agree. I agree. And, and, we're, and we're looking at uh, who needs to be on the team uh, and the uh, DNR is definitely a key player that would need to be on the team. Councilwoman Clancy, are you done? Yeah, that was my question for now. I mean, okay. do, are you? I mean, are you doing any? You said they need to be on the team. So does that mean you're not working with them on this issue yet? Uh, yeah, we're trying to just pull the team together at okay. this point. So we want to clean it up and pull the team together. Uh, start uh, increasing enforcement with the cameras, uh, with the cement cinder block to keep access, limit access uh, to the area. Uh, those uh, type of things, as well as, like I said pull this collaborative team together. Okay, good. Yeah. I mean, I think it sounds like we're on the same page. They're an important piece of this puzzle here. They need to be at the table with everyone else helping us to solve it. So thank you. Thank you. Councilman Trakas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just so the record's clear here and the representations are accurate, unless I'm mistaken, mistaken, any uh, violations that we've talked about with respect to Wilson would fall outside the jurisdiction of St. Louis County Municipal Court, number one. Number two, I believe that there's uh, some state statutes involved that would uh, pull in the prosecutor's office. So I want to make sure the record's clear on that. Um, I don't want folks to go away from here thinking that somehow um, some all any of this falls within the purview of St. Louis County Municipal Court. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Finch. 
And maybe uh, Ms. Orwick could chime in here, but I think if those are county-owned properties, uh, ordinances do apply on those, even though they're in municipalities. Is that right, Beth? Well, there, I don't believe the properties we're talking about are county-owned properties. But if they're in an ordinance, if they're in a different municipality, we would look to that municipality. We, we prosecute violations in unincorporated St. Louis County. And the state ones, level crimes are with uh, Mr. Bell's office, of course. So none of the properties that are in question are owned by the county or uh, an arm of the county? Is that what I heard? That's what I'm hearing, but that's just what I'm gathering from our conversation today. I haven't dug into this. Perhaps um, Ms. Diamond or Mr. Graham could, could um, fill us in more on that. Uh, yeah, the ones that we're talking about, and that's all. Awesome. Yeah, we're talking about uh, properties that, excuse me, that land clearance for redevelopment authority owns. And the land clearance real authority of uh, uh, development (LCRA) is arm of what? And it's an entity that's managed uh, under the partnership, uh, but it's the St. Louis County Land Clearance for Redevelopment Authority. So it is these the city, 150 city and others have properties. Their own. I'm sorry, it did. So the 150 properties that you mentioned are owned by St. Louis County. No. A, which is part but, of St. Louis County. But, no? No, no. But they're, no, but, Chair. but they're technically owned by the Land Clearance for Redevelopment Authority as, as an entity. Correct. Separate entity. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think we're, we're I think we're grasping uh, straws here, but nonetheless, I think that because of the fact that you are handling the uh, the cleanup, thank you very much for that. But I think the county has some culpability in this, whether we want to do it or not. But anyway, thank you, Councilman Fitch. Is that what is that, Ed? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, um, Rodney. Do you want Kristen or uh, Mr. Buddy or uh, Kim Timer to weigh in at any time on this? Any of this? Do you have a comment? Yeah, they're, they're, uh, yeah, I generally ask them if there's anything that I missed that they wanted to cover, uh, please do so. And uh, if you could, uh, Bill, put your number in the chat or either uh, say your number uh, if you want to do that. Uh, of course. It can be reached through the St. Louis County directory, um, but my direct line is 314-615. Seven six five one. Again, six one five seven six five one. Anyone else? <coughs> Councilman Harper. Yeah, I think we need to get this real clear about who owns these properties. I think we kind of glanced <laughs> over that. Um, so, well, it, so it's, yeah, it, it, it's the Land Clearance for Redevelopment Authority, and. Uh, Kim Dime and our lawyers on the phone, I mean, on the Zoom, so she can comment. Councilman Harder, are you referring to all the properties on in the Lulu Heights area or the distinction between the county and the LCRA? The distinction between the county and the LCRA. Okay, right. So the, uh, the LCRA is um, an independent political subdivision under the state of Missouri um, laws. And the board is appointed by, um, by St. Louis County through um, a appointment process, with the uh, county executive and approval by the county council. Um, and so it does have its own independent board. Um, I think it traditionally has been considered uh, what I've heard referred to as a county board um, you know, officially one of the, uh, the county's sort of arm of the county, um, but it is an independent uh, board and it is um, managed through the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership. So that board has a budget, that board has legal authority over those properties and ownership. And if those properties were sold, the proceeds would go to that board, correct? That's not correct. To Louis, not to St. Louis County. If someone if someone is hurt uh, on those properties, that would be the responsibility of that board, not St. Louis County. That's correct. Okay. 
okay, from a liability standpoint. So all of this rests solely with that board and the priorities that they decide on what those properties should be and, and if they get cleaned up or not, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. I just want to make clear what that is. Thank you. Thank you. And, and can you send us, uh, I, don't, I don't know, we, well, we'll do some research and find out who is on the board, who chairs that board, uh, because they may need to come in next. And by the way, uh, Lulu Heights has looked like this before COVID. You know, we kind of try to blame everything on COVID. This place looked like this before COVID. So we can't just say that all of a sudden now that this is why this looks like this. That is not acceptable. Um, Kristen. You have yeah, a comment? If Kristen uh, has, it, has any comments you would like to make, feel free. I don't have anything. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Kim, is there Thank any you. traditional you, that you'd like to say? Kim? Uh, no, the only um, issue that I think we will have to address at some point is the municipalities that are not participating um, with St. Louis County enforcement but that have significant um, illegal dumping problems, there has to be a special solution, I think, for those communities. Um, we, have to, we have to look at those communities in particular and how do we ensure that they have the help they need to address um, a, a problem. Thank you, Councilman Fitch. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for Ms. Diamond. Uh, the municipalities, let's just pick one, let's say it's Wellston and they're not cooperating uh, with enforcement. And I don't know that, that to be true, but I'm just using them as an example. Could they uh, pass an ordinance in Wellston to turn over enforcement to our county municipal court system? Uh, isn't that something that's possible? And, and I don't know, maybe it's not a question for you, it might be for the county counselor's office. Um, I do think it's possible, um, but I think that county's current system would um, provide for that cooperative agreement with um, payment from the municipality for those services um, that potentially would help address these issues. And so uh, that may be, I, I can't speak for the community. Uh, Wellston does not have an agreement with the county, so I can't speak to exactly why they don't. Um, but I think that that's, a, a, you know, they could pass an ordinance to cooperate with the county, but without participating in the county's structure and that agreement, the enforcement uh, participation with the county wouldn't happen. Okay. Yeah, and I would just say that, I mean, we have our own issues in our own county municipal court with enforcement of these type of issues. Um, so I'm not so sure that they could take on any more work. I just wondered what the possibilities were if we're not getting cooperation for enforcement from that municipal court in that city, if we could have an agreement with them to take over those prosecutions. Maybe that's a tough question. Beth? Yes, thank you. Um, per our charter, and I can send you over the relevant sections, we could contract as a county with different municipalities um, however, we cannot have um, the, the enforcement prosecution piece of it. That is not allowed by our charter, but the other sections of it are. So those municipalities would have to have their own prosecutor, which is certainly that, something that could be negotiated. Um, but that's kind of the general framework for it. And Beth, okay. just to clarify, you're talking about criminal prosecution. For ordinance not. violations. For okay. ordinance violations. For state level things, that's, that's Wesley Bell's purview. Okay, but for civil fines? For ordinance violations, right. Okay. It would have to be a contract. And depending on the contract, you might need to go to the council um, Madam Chair, for approval. So it sounds like it is possible for us to enforce with an agreement with that municipality, but they have to just choose their own prosecutor. That's, that's possible. I mean, that, that's a generalization. We need to, to look at each one specifically but that's the general framework as I see it. Actually, can you hear me? Can I comment on that, Pat Kelly? Yes, Pat. Yeah, with respect to the courts, just to be clear, 
Um, if, if there is a municipal court, they have to enforce their own ordinances. Um, now, a municipality can dissolve their court, and at that point, then St. Louis County is then required to um, um, take over their, you know, to, to process their tickets and so forth through the county courts. Um, so, I mean, but they couldn't just do property maintenance in county courts. If there is a municipal court, it has to go through the municipal court. Thank you, because I, I think most of the muties do have their own prosecutor there, so uh, that would that would handle that. Yeah, there's. I'm sorry. Yeah, they are still required to have their own prosecutor, but it would be handled through the through the county courts. Counties, county courts through through not the associate level courts, not the municipal right. courts. Correct. Right. Yes. Circuit. Right. Okay, Councilman Trakis. Thank you, Ms. Orwick. Um, if municipality was the contract with the county for your office to prosecute violations of its ordinances, you would appear and, and present those cases in associate court, correct? My office by the charter can't do that. They have to have their own, the, the, the municipalities would have to have their own prosecutor. Um, and depending I understand that. You just told us a moment ago that the charter allows your or the county to contract for the prosecution of their violations. Is that not? But what not you said? It? No, I'm sorry. No, it, not the prosecution of it. The, to handling the court services of it, the judges, for example, the clerks. Okay, that would the, be in, in, that would be an associate court or in mini court. Uh, the county could. Uh, in certain situations, make a contract with different municipalities in municipal court, in county and municipal court. Okay. And to Councilman Fitch's point, um, the municipal court for the, for the county is already overtaxed. Following up on Mr. Kelly's comment, as you sit here today, Ms. Orwick, is your office sufficiently staffed to handle any more work with respect to problem properties? Simply no. We would Thank need um, more prosecutors. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Webb. Um, so I just want to pull back before us all, even though we're talking about the partnership in Wilson and other municipalities, there are properties inside of unincorporated St. Louis, St. Louis County that needs the enforcements of the ordinance that we currently have. And uh, Mr. Krim, as you talked about the cameras that's been installed in Wilson, there have been cameras in Council Point for a long time. And they have not prosecuted um, or held anyone accountable for the dumping. And it's not just residents dumping. It's dumping from commercial companies that have found it to be okay to dump in someone's backyard just because they don't live there. And it appalls me that our structure in the St. Louis County has not held any of those companies, whether they saw them on camera or not, accountable. And that is what I want to put before you all. So as you work out the partnership in their plan on how they're going to work to enforce and provide citations for the partnership in Wilson and wherever else, don't forget about unincorporated North County because what you're doing for that area needs to be enforced and unincorporated. Cameras have been in Council Point for years. And I don't believe there's been one commercial dumper that's been caught on camera held accountable. So please work on behalf of all of our county. Appreciate that. Well said. Well said. Uh, any other questions for uh, the partnership? As I said earlier, um, you know, this has gone on for a long time. We don't need to blame COVID or whatever else. It, it's a situation that needs to be addressed. Thank you for having this, this cleanup day. And uh, we hope that this will continue with the cameras, the enforcement and whatever else it needs. But the way that looks now is totally unacceptable. So I do appreciate y'all coming out and uh, um, we'll, we'll be expecting some kind of a plan. We'll be looking at some kind of plan or how you want to move forward with not just Wilson, not just Lulu Heights, but other properties that you have that are part of the LCRA and, and uh, whatever else is under your auspices. All right. Yeah, and just to make it clear, it's just uh, primarily Wilson is where our properties are. But we do want to partner with the other municipalities 
to help address this issue because it is a critical issue. And I'm hoping that some of those uh, leadership uh, people are on the line on, uh, that they can hear this uh, because that ultimately is their responsibility. But what we want to know is what's our responsibility we are handling and perhaps it will grow uh, into that. Um, we are at 407 and we have uh, four, four more departments to do. We probably will not get to all of that today. Uh, and I do appreciate y'all uh, staying on the line. We will go to revenue. I don't, I don't know, but we do have another meeting at 4:30. And I want to be uh, I want to be sensitive to the um, to the council members that are here. So, uh, Mr. Um, Dr. Hollins, take it away. Chris, could you uh, give me sharing rights? I'll bring up the slide for revenue. And Fazo, if you could go to my second slide. Thank you. Um, just as soon as I have uh, sharing rights. And Councilwoman, I will be efficient and respectful of the time of the council. Thank you so much. Perfect. So as far as, as waste, trash, waste, and dumping, our role is very limited in the Department of Revenue. Um, we receive about 5,500 calls a month for various things. Less than 10 are related to trash, waste, and dumping. When we do receive uh, calls related to that matter. If it's in a municipality, we will we will put the taxpayer um, in contact with that municipality. If it's related, if it's on in, in, in an unincorporated area, we then will then put them in contact with Public Works. Our primary role when it when it relates to trash waste and dumping is whenever either a municipality or the county takes action against a property owner. And it's primarily in our post third and trustee properties, which are properties that the county has liens against for past due taxes and fees. Um, whenever, whether it be public works or a municipality takes action. So the primary actions are going to cut the grass, doing a property cleanup, or in the worst case scenario, a demo, demolition of the property, the cost of those activities are charged against the property owner and placed on the property tax bill, which becomes part of the taxes and fees due to that property. Where, where you, the reason I wanted to, to start and, and really show this slide is, this is a slide of all the post third and trustee properties that the county currently has liens against. Just to remind the council, a post third or trustee property is a property that the county has a lien against that is five years or more past due, right? Um, what we have found, and uh, I've started to kind of more to start to map out the properties to get a sense of where they're at. Uh, when you look at the trend, the trend is, is basically we're following the same trend as the city of St. Louis. Um, if you were to put the city of St. Louis up against this map, you would see that northern part where they have the majority of their vacant properties and, and that issue is moving into our northern part of North County. Um, so the majority of our of our post third trustee properties are in North County. Um, as far as interaction, um, again, we, we interact with Public Works when we are notified of dumping, um, also with the municipalities. Um, as far as, again, inquiry calls, like I said, 99% of the calls we receive are really related to a taxpayer's bill. We rarely, you know, generally less than 10 calls a month that we'll get related to actual dumping. Um, and then we would notify the Public Works or, um, or, or the municipality. How we best can, from our department, based on our responsibility, really try to attack this problem is to the properties that are, you know, post third and trustee that we are, we're selling the, the liens to uh, potential buyers is to better sell those properties. And that's where, uh, that's where I've really spent a lot of my time is trying to improve the way we sell our properties to get them in hands and of taxpayers or of good taxpayers who are actually going to bring the properties back on the tax rolls, right? Because in all intents and purposes, these properties are not on the tax roll. Um, and so one of the things we've identified is kind of where we have what I'd say large pockets of concentration of post third and trustee properties. Those concentrations are Wellston, 
Castle Point, Spanish Lake, and Kenlock. And what I have done is started to work with St. Louis Partnership, specifically Bill Buddy, to figure out ways where we can address these properties, address these areas, right? Because realistically, you know, Frank, to be frank, it's going to be hard for us to sell a interest in a property where that one property is surrounded by 20 other properties, right? Um, that are vacant and past due. If you look at um, Castle Point, for example, there are approximately 250 properties in Castle Point that the county has liens against, right? So the best way to address that problem is more from a holistic, holistic approach, right? Where we try to develop a plan to bring those communities back online. And my department, obviously not being the economic development arm of the county, is not in a position to do that, which is why I've instituted, you know, building a partnership with St. Louis Economic Partnership, specifically with Bill Buddy, to address these four key areas that have areas of concentration. So I want to leave it there. I know we're short on time, but I want to make sure that the council has time to ask questions. Thank you very much for that. Uh, any council members with questions at this time? Any council members with any questions at this time? All right, uh, Councilman Madam Harder. Chair. Councilman Harder, I saw him with his hand first. Yes, thank, then thank Councilwoman you. Webb, and then I thought I saw Councilman Fitch. Yes. Um, no? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, how do we get these properties? You know, we have to uh, let them basically sit there for three years without paying taxes. So three years on a house, it, it can destroy a house, especially if it's vacant. Uh, and then there's no value left to that building at the end of three years. What can be done legally uh, to get these things resolved maybe in that first year somehow so we can get actually somebody wants to get these homes and rehab them a little quicker before they're passed to a point of no return and that leads to the next problem and the next problem how can we do that is there a way of doing that legally there legally we cannot sell a property until the end of that third year so due to state statute we cannot meeting the county so if someone is passed due after the first year, we cannot sell that property. It has to be it has to be the beginning of that third year, the third, fourth, and fifth years where you have the annual sale. If that property doesn't sell and the annual sale in the fifth year, then it becomes a post third property. So that's all laid out in state statute. So I, as representing the, the collector of revenue, cannot go in after one year and sell that entrance legally. So you're saying we're we are stuck from based on state law to really not do anything for five years. So if you if if you're a flipper and you want to get into a house that looks like it could you know be salvaged, you got to wait five years before well, you could purchase that. No, three years. So three years. yeah, three years. So we can sell a property, which we do on the annual sale after the third year. So that third year that it's not it is not paid for. We have the annual sale. If the property doesn't sell after the third year, the fourth year, the fifth year, that's when it becomes a post third property. So it's it's actually after the third year. So we we're stuck for the first three years. Okay. So there's no but, way but, of there's no way of changing that or getting around that. No you sir. State. No state. No sir. And also um, the situation to your point is even actually even worse because when they buy that interest from us. They then have to go to court and file a quiet claim, quiet claim case to get full ownership of the property, right? Because the the, the title is what is called clouded, right? And so that takes anywhere from six months to a year to get yeah. through court. Yeah. So you're re correct. So you're so you you basically add six months to a year on top of the state statute for realistically when, to your question, when a developer could go in and put a shovel in the ground. Because okay. I know a lot of flippers that come to our sales and then get, you know, kind of misdirected and or don't understand the process. And then the stuff that is really available to buy is not worth having. You know, it's, it's almost to a teardown status at that point. You're correct. Uh, and 
Yeah, we're 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 trying to we're doing definitely trying to do a better job to educate the public. What also confuses the public is our process is different than the city's process because the city's process is under the land bank law, which is a very different law. So when they sell after only after five years, and when they sell a property, they actually own the property free and clear, right? So they are selling a property that has clean title because they're using a different law. Is there any movement to move in that direction? Would that help us or hurt us? Um, it, it, there's been discussions. The question is because a land bank creates another government agency, right, that has to be funded. And then those properties are going to sit in that government agency. And, and, and under most land bank state laws, that, that land bank agency has the legal responsibility to actually maintain and develop that property. So that the obviously would be a cost. Also, from a, you would have we would have to go to state you know, state statute, and the two land banks that exist and they're under two different laws. One is Kansas City, one is St. Louis. Um, if you did a land bank at the county level in St. Louis County, it'd be the first county with a land bank. So. I would have to defer to the attorneys to see what the particulars of that would be. But aren't we kind of doing that with the LCRA? Well, LCRA is basically, to a certain extent, yes. But what LCRA has done is they went and purchased those properties outright like a private developer. The process, for example, in the city is when it goes through that fifth sale and it goes through the sheriff sale, there's a judicial process that the land bank goes through where literally all those properties that didn't sell in their annual sale basically get batched in a large group and all the titles get cleared in a large batch and get moved over in one in one legal swoop over to the land bank for, for lack of proper, you know, I, I don't want to play lawyer and get in trouble. Um, but with, with F, but so basically, so it's a it's a judicial process that moves those properties, you know, in a batch type structure from all the owners who basically have abandoned their properties over into the land St. Louis's land bank. Similar process in Kansas City versus filing, you know, having to file a case one by one, you know, a quiet claim case one by one on every property, which. I can't speak for the partnership, but I'm sure that's what they did. They probably they either found the owner and just paid for a property, or they bought maybe bought our interest and then went to the quiet claim process and claimed the property using the interest they acquired in it. So when they acquired the property, the partnership, they're no different than the average citizen doing it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Councilwoman Webb. I think you had a question. Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, thank you so much. And I'm going to keep it brief because I know we're short on time. But Ms. Dr. Hollins, first, thank you. Because what he's saying and what he showed you all is that that concentration of that need of services in North County is, it, it, it far exceeds exponentially any other, way, any other place in the county. And there's only two, if I'm correct, in your department, Dr. Hollins. Is well, that correct? Well, it's, it's actually a department of four. But four. But that department is the entire back tax department. So this is one of 20 different things they do. They handle all bankruptcies, right. um, all both real property and personal property. So it, it's a massive undertaking. And yes, sir. That's what I'm alluding to, sir. Yes, the fact that this is a massive undertaking and there's only, okay, sorry, not two, but four people not only looking into this, but a whole bunch of the, the Department of Revenue issues for the county. And I keep seeing whether it's COVID, whether it's vaccination, whether it's <sighs> vacant in, in vacant homes that need to be demolished to this issue. The amount of services that need to be concentrated, we do not have adequate staff to support it. So as we're thinking about this council members and partnership, we need to think about long term these issues on how we can provide better services to our community. Dr. Hollins, thank you and your department for all that you do. Uh, unfortunately, I am going to have to pull on you all because we've got to work. Oh, Mr. Krim left. I guess Mr. Bob left too. I want that partnership to hear mm -hmm. that it's got to be a collaborative effort. And if we don't have that collaboration, each independent department is not going to be able to make a dent in the issues that we have. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Hollins, and thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And thank you. And I think that's, that goes to the point where we need to have a plan. We have to have a plan to address this. It just cannot be done in isolation. Thank you so much. Let me see if anyone else has any questions, Dr. Hollins, for you. 
No other questions. Well, thank you so much for, for coming and and, uh, and helping us kind of better understand this. Uh, we may be calling upon you again uh, as, as we move forward, looking at what kind of progress has been made. So I'm happy to you. help. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, council members, it is 421. I have, I have um, Pat Kelly, the Municipal League. Pat, are you still there? Pat has obviously dropped off. So what we will do, then that will give us a good opportunity where we can adjourn at this particular I'm moment. here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pat, can you quickly give us what your take is on uh, the trash, the dumping from the Municipal League's perspective? Yeah, I mean, bringing this back to, to what the real issue that we're, we're supposed to be talking about is really illegal dumping and, and, and then the enforcement of that. Uh, from the municipal perspective, there's a lot I'd like to say, but I don't think we have the time. But I do want to re 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 refresh everybody that following Senate Bill 5, which was the court reform, which really affected St. Louis County primarily, and then the following year, there was another bill submitted by um, Attorney General Eric Schmidt uh, when he was senator, uh, it was Senate Bill 572, which limited the authority of municipalities to enforce property maintenance violations. So there's been a culmination of those things impacting the, the municipal courts in St. Louis County and their ability to enforce their local ordinances. But with respect to the illegal dumping, dumping it really comes down to we need a plan for enforcement because the, the land clearance authority or the city of Wilson or this or St. Louis County that owns these properties, they're the victim in this and that this is illegal dumping uh, that's taking place on the property that they own. Um, and, and I'm not making excuses for everybody, but we need to come uh, develop a plan for the enforcement and, and penalizing those people who are doing the illegal dumping. And I think that's where we could really have some collaboration on how we can, can bring that together um, uh, to resolve that issue. Um, and, and so, um, you know, again, I think there's a lot more that I could say, uh, but the league and our membership, you know, we're willing to work with uh, uh, St. Louis County, the partnership and anybody uh, to help resolve these and, and first clean up the sites, but then also keep them clean. Well, thank you, Pat, because I think that you will be an integral part of whatever plan it comes to come to fruition. You will be absolutely a, a key part in that representing all of the municipalities or the majority of municipalities in, in St. Louis County. And that will be extremely helpful for that. Let me see if there's anyone at, have any questions for you, uh, Pat. Any questions for Pat Kelly? Councilwoman Clancy. Yeah, I mean, and I guess I could have asked this question of anyone, but why are people illegal dumping? Is it because they don't have anywhere else to take their trash? So, I mean, as much as we talk about enforcement, what are some of the options we can point people to? Um, yeah, to be, well, I can tell you, I, it, it's easy, right? You know, you've got areas where there there are, aren't that many people around. Um, and, and I think uh, to a couple people have made this point already that a lot of these are businesses. You know, they, they go in and they... they you know, um, say we'll demolish your deck for you, and then they drive around the corner and dump it in somebody else's backyard. Um, and and you know, then they don't have to pay those tipping fees, so they make that much more money by by dumping it illegally. And it's a, it's a matter of convenience for them. Um, and until we can come up with a plan to to monitor that and catch them and enforce it, um, uh, um, then you know they're going to continue to do it. And, and, okay. I think, yeah. and I think, again, that's why we need that collaborative effort in order to, to monitor that and, and keep the enforcement up. I mean, Councilman Harder brought up a point about behavior change, and I don't think you change behavior strictly by enforcement. You have to have carrots and sticks. So what are some carrots we can think about as we figure out what our plan is? Madam Chair. One, one second. Uh, Councilwoman Clancy, were you asking a question? No, I mean, that's just, I think, on the table for us to that's, okay. that's on the table for us to think about. All right. Thank you. Councilwoman Webb? I'm sorry. I, Councilman Harder had his hand up. I apologize, Councilman Harder. I need to see it. Okay. I'll just briefly, and I'll, I'll agree with uh, uh, Ms. Clancy, too. Yes, we need uh, carrots and sticks. We need to provide some alternatives for dumping, uh, whether it's a designated place that can be taken somewhere else. Uh, we have to enforce 
uh, what is being dumped and the people that are dumping. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the landfills are in the county. And if you're tearing down a deck, as Pat said, you got to take it out to Bridgeton to the landfill, or you got to go to South County, or you got to go to Valley Park, dump it, and then pay to dump it. And if you're an in if you're an unscrupulous contractor that wants to make a buck, uh, unfortunately, they don't want to pay those fees, so they'll find the closest lot in the you know in the middle of the night and dump this stuff, um, and you know move on from there. So we've got a lot of different things to look at here, and I think it there isn't one solution to this based on what Pat said. And we and if we clean it up, we can clean up all these sites tomorrow. But next week they're going to be back in the same shape again if we don't have a plan. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Harder. Councilwoman Webb. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I agree with my my colleagues and what they're saying, but this is what's baffling me. They're not dumping in Chesterfield. They're not dumping in Ladue, and they're not dumping in, in other areas. And so my concern as a representative of North County is it's not just the carrots, which I applaud, and we need to give them alternative, but there's got to be enforcement because they feel as though, in my opinion, hearing the feedback and the pictures from Council Point and other areas, is that, oh, we can do this to North County. Nobody's looking. We're good. And I want us as government, the government of North County and leaders in North County to say no that's not acceptable. We're all a part of this county together, and we will not allow you to do this in any part of the county. So, thank you for allowing me to make those comments, Madam Chair, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Pat, uh, we're going to uh, stop here. Uh, I know you, I don't know if Terry's on the, on the call or not, but when we do reschedule, I want to make sure that you feel free to come back because you, you indicated you had to say much more, but time did not allow. So we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to do that. And I appreciate your coming today uh, with with uh, with uh, giving us the information that you did have. Okay. Great, and I would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Do we have any public comments today? We do not, Madam Chair. We do not. All right. Well, listen, uh, council members, we will be uh, reconvening this. We will pick up with the municipal league and move forward with this as, as councilwoman's web passion uh, is coming through here. We have a major concern that we need to address and we need to do it now. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, no. Uh, thank you, and uh, we adjourn, and I'll see you in uh, three minutes. <laughs> thank you.